Hello, this is a demonstration on how to animate a asymmetrical model in DAS 3D. It would be impossible to use the transfer utility on a model like this. Uh, not only is it asymmetrical, but it really doesn't conform to any of the proportions of the Genesis rigging. So you couldn't use the transfer tool. And because it's asymmetrical, you really can't use the figure setup tool. So you have to do everything by hand. DAS 3D is pretty powerful for a free application. It provides you with tools that you can animate by hand. And by hand, I mean paint your own weight brush, uh, paint your own weight maps, and uh, create your own skeleton and rig it. For this demonstration, I'm going to show you how I'm going to rig this little Santa Claus I created in Sculptress. It won't be a long demonstration, and I can't show you everything, but I'll show you what you need to know to get started. I've already imported uh, Santa's hat into DAS 3D, and I've added the texture to it. So I'll import the figure right now. And I'll texture that as well before I start uh, animating him, or, or I should say rigging him would be the proper term. So I've clicked on the Surface and Rendering tab in DAS 3D, and I've brought up the uh, Surface tool. Now I'm going to change the diffuse uh, texturing, and I just open up the texture I've already created in Sculptress for Santa. I'm going to change, uh, I'm going to add the normal mapping. which I've also created in Sculptress, if I can find it. Oh, might as well change the mat to matte finish instead of plastic while I'm at it. So here's the normal mapping. This is step one. You've imported your figures. I've uh, gone ahead and turned off uh, texture shading so that it's easier for me to see stuff. Now I've imported my figures into DAS 3D and I've selected the Santa Claus, the main figure, not the hat. Before I can add a bone or a weight to the figure, I need to go up to the Edit option, bring down the menu, I have to go to the option, op object tab, bring down that menu, then I have to go to rigging, and then I have to convert the pro uh, the prop property into a uh, figure. I use the general weight map. General weight map is uh, uh, works a lot better with uh, asymmetrical objects and figures of your own creation. So now that the property has been converted to a figure, you need to go to the building tab. This is where you start your bones. This is your main bone. Um, basically this is the entire figure. If you're in the scene tab, this is the hip bone. This is where you want to start adding bones. Uh, the hip bones influenced by this main bone here. Now you'll add children to the hip bone. I'm going to leave this. I have two screens here but I'm going to leave this on this side so you can see what happens. Now I'm going to create a child bone and I'll give it the name chest.
Now there's two ways to add stuff in, add uh, bones in, or rotation orders in. You can do it here, which I'm going to do this here. And basically what that does is it makes this bone pivot up and down. This is the range here. So all this upper part, the green arrows are the pivot point and this is the cutoff for where your where you your range of influence on your weight brush will be. So if I was to rotate this on the z-axis you'll see it goes from side to side. If I rotate it on the y-axis, you'll notice it spins around. And if I do it on the x-axis, it's like it spins forward and backwards. So order of rotation is uh, very important. Now that you have your main bone, it's a good point for me to show you uh, the basics of using the, uh, the weight brush. To get to the weight brush, you go to the tools section. You select node weight map brush. Now what this gives you is an assortment of different brushes you can use to paint this figure here. Now this is it starts out with a standard paintbrush. Now you notice I'm, I'm clicking on it but it's not painting. The reason it's not painting is before you do anything with this brush you have to go over and select a map. We're going to select the general map. You'll notice now the figure is gray. It means every part of it's unmapped. So there are a few controls for this brush. Uh, this green spot is, is the most intense area on the brush. And the red is the fall off. I'm going to remove that here. Now notice if I increase the green spot by holding down the shift key and using my my mouse middle roller button, I can increase the green spot. Now that red spot is, is much bigger. So I'm using Control Z to, to uh, get out of uh, to remove what I've done. And the reason I'm doing this, I want to show you, in this situation, the paintbrush is too long and tedious. What you want to do is uh, create this general map for the chest really quick. And I like to use the uh, a, a different brush for that. I like to use the directional gradient brush. Now, it the g directional gradient brush has a default location and always whenever you, you click on it, it puts it in that general direction. So what you do is you already got your weight map selected, general map. You want to snap this brush to the bone that you're in. You have to be on the bone that you're in to create the weight mapping for. So notice it comes right up here. Now I want this guy to be. I want his entire upper portion to be the chest. That includes the arms and everything. So I adjust this accordingly. You want to get this as close to the top. I'm going to hide his hat for a minute so I can do this correctly. Close to the top of his head as you can. Right there. Then you're going to go to Gradient Edit, and you're going to snap gradient to, or you're going to apply the gradient to the mode. Ah, see, now you got some nice intensity there. And at this point, you can actually animate the figure when you couldn't do this before. See? But he's still a little flat. That's why it's kind of cool to do it this way. 
Now I'm going to switch to the brush. Paintbrush. And notice how flat he is. And I'm going to make some of these areas more intense. Now look at the de how it deforms. Oops. Got to remove that because I hit his pants. And what this is doing is uh, it's a, it, as I paint, I'm exerting a stronger influence on on these the polygons and vertices in the, in this area. So they get moved more. I don't want any distortion in his face when he bends at the at the chest. I want his head to bend completely when I do that. So this is where the paintbrush comes in really handy because you can bend him in this position. And you can work on getting everything fixed up just right. Now I'm going to zero him out. I'm going to restore the figure pose. And the way I do that is I go to Edit, Figure, Restore, and Restore Figure Pose. And I come straight back up. And notice how red his head is now. Now I want the rest of his whole upper body this red. Because when he bends at the chest, I want his arms and his whole upper body to follow. So unfortunately the gradient tool isn't really great with that. I've had some mixed results with the spherical tool. And this is the spherical tool. And uh, I don't really care for this because there's no easy way to snap to the location of the bone. And uh, you basically have to move this by hand. It's, it's really a pain in the butt, so. I stick with the brush on this and uh, the directional gradient. They seem to work the best. So I'm going to paint this. And uh, as soon as I get done, Be careful not when you're looking at this, you might like accidentally say like I've got his pants in the chest. You don't want that. So the way to remove that is just to hit the Alt key and paint. So that will take away any accidental mapping you have. Alt and paint. Okay, now let's uh, rotate him on his axis. axis. Now see how he's got some lumpiness to him? Especially right back here. Because it's an irregular surface, it's hard for the brush to get in there. So it's nice that you can move him while you're working on him. 
see all the areas that you've missed and then paint them. Some of these longer spikes are really too narrow for the paintbrush to hit too, so you have to move him a little bit in and out so you get the peak softer and more accessible to the brush. Be thorough, or you could end up with a spiky mess. There's some extreme uh, distortion in the chest that's not caused by the weight maps. This is the, caused by the bones. Uh, so I'm going to go to the bone editor and make some adjustment in the chest bone to see if I can't remove some of that distortion or at least, you know, make it a little bit more bearable. Granted, uh, Santa's, ch well, no human's chest really burns that, uh, bends that extremely. Yeah. So, um, we can put limits on that to make sure that it doesn't reach that point. Uh, this is one of the frustrating parts of Daz is the sensitivity of these arrows. If you're not exactly on them, it'll switch to another node. So, that hasn't proved it much. Make some more adjustments. Nope, nope, nope. Maybe up. Yes, up. Again, he's not going to bend that extremely at the chest. So that might be the best we can expect. I've completed my animation and uh, as soon as I refine it just a little bit, I'll go ahead and render it. But I can uh, play it right here in Daz. It's kind of choppy and not smooth, but it gives me an idea of what what I've done so far, whether it works or not. And that's pretty much it. That's how you uh, use the weight brush and the bones to animate a figure that you've made. I hope that this has been helpful. And if it has, um, your numbers will show that. And if you have any other requests, just let me know. Thanks.